Hello and welcome to another starter video. My name is Stefan Eriksson and today in this video we're going to take a closer look at double loops or nested loops or whatever you want to call them. More than one loop within each other. And perhaps we're not going to stop just with double, maybe we'll do something more crazy at the end. But let's see when we get there. First, before we get that far, let's look at a data set that I prepared for you guys here. It's something in start, so you can all replicate everything I'm doing here. This is a nice little 1998 life expectancy data set where we got data from three different regions, Europe and Central Asia, North America and South America. We got a bunch of countries within each one of these. And then we got some variables which could be very interesting to look at. Before we get any further with double loops, let's recap a little bit what we did in the previous video, because we can use some of these concepts here in this video. So we can first define a group global. In this case, I wanna use a global instead of a local. And I'm just going to call it a test group, just to give it a name. And here we can put in what variables we need to have in here. We got population growth. That's one of the variables I can see on my screen. Life expectancy and GNP per capita. So what we can do with these groups, we can make a loop so we can go through a command for each of these variables. And we learned that via a for each loop. So we say for each variable of the global and then we call it the test group. Let's write that up. We put these curly brackets. And then of course we can do whatever command that will say run through each of these variables. We can, for instance, just for this example, just summarize them. So I wanna summarize these variables. Let's try and run this code, see if I made any mistakes. Ah, oh, it looks beautiful, excellent. And we can of course do many other things, but for now we're just gonna do this. This here is one simple, straightforward loop. We've done this before. There's nothing new under the sun on this one, but we want to expand this. So before I really expand to a double loop, let's introduce a new kind of loop that I have not done in the previous video. This is a so-called for values loop. And these are typically preferred in terms of efficiency. But what we want to do here is you want to create a counter from which you can count through this loop. You want to kind of create values you can count. So the typical syntax will be four values, and then you generate a counter that can be I, J, K, L, M, doesn't matter, can pick whatever letter you want. We want to start from a given number, and this is very handy if you have different years of data and you want to loop through this number. So you can write from 2010, 11, 12, 13, all the way up until, well, next year, who cares, whenever. And the point is, you can then, in my case, start just with one, then you can simplify within the parentheses, how much should it increase every time? So you can increase with one or with two or with three, a given interval. I'm just gonna do for one and we can go up until three. Why do I wanna do three? Because in my example, I just wanna summarize these three nice variables here. Sorry, one for starters. Within each of these three regions I see, I saw, what was it again? Europe and Asia, North and South America. So you see the syntax is very similar like this. Now we just generate a counter instead of going through a, a, you know, a group of variables. So now I can say, I wanna just summarize for now, just population growth, P2P, growth, we have it here. If, and then we can say region equals equals because we're testing an equality here, equal to I, the number of counters. So every time it goes through, it will start with I1, so it's the first region, I2, second region, and I3, the third region. So if I do this, we should get three times the summary of this population growth. But that's nice and all, but we haven't really achieved the double loop here. The way we do that is simply just by combining these two loops, which is, uh, let's face it, that's pretty cool. And we also want to be sure that we keep a nice little syntax here, because you notice with both the for each and the for values, there's this um, tap in here, and that's common to do with loops such that you see that for each will always line up with the end of the curly bracket here. That is something that is very, very important when you do, well, good coding conduct. But we're not teaching programming here per se, but it's nice to know. So let's now try and combine these. We wanna take this four values loop, and I wanna, well, I just copied it, of course, and pasted it, but we're gonna put inside this for each loop, such that we can now say we want for each of the regions, summarize all three variables. That will be cool. So we wanna try and combine this here. So I'm gonna try and do that. We're gonna try and move this inside. We're gonna clean this up a little bit because this is not code conduct. This looks a lot better. 
But right now it would not do what we really want because you see here we have four values. We go to then for each. You see I'm starting to nest the loops and create such a double loop. And the way we can just do it now is by say if region equals equals to i. That was what we had earlier from this loop from before. So now how does this work? You start with i one, and then you go with number one. That's the say the first region. And then you go into the next loop because you dive into the loops as you go along. And now it says for i equal to one, we're going to summarize all these variables in the test group. That was one, two, three. So you're going to see summarize for these three variables for the first region. Then it starts over again from outside in. So then for number i number two, and it does all the three again and then for three. Let's see if I did any mistakes. It runs it. We can see here that this seems to actually look quite okay. I want to make sure everything is on screen for you guys. So you can see here, we first have population growth, life expectancy, and the GMP per capita. We see here one, two, three, that was for the first, one, two, three again, and then one, two, three. That adds up. You can also see for the observations that would fit if you go and count it. But that's cool. So now we have now taught how to do a double loop or a nested loop. That is super cool. But uh, you know, if you want to do a little more crazy, you can actually just, you know, go even further. So now we're going to do here for the end a little more crazy example. Don't take this for, uh, say, uh, good stuff or anything. I just feel like we should try this out. So now suppose for a moment we don't we want to do it not only for the region, but we want to sort them, say, for each region, you can then go for a subsection lower per country. Uh, that sounds a little fishy and all when I explain like this, but let's just try it out. So for instance, I want to sort my regions because then we can generate a new counter. You could use in code, but that would give you some issues. You can try it out and see what I mean. But so we're just going to make a little code here that's going to generate a nice counter. We have seen some of these uh, tri tips and tricks in the previous video of, well, 10 tips and tricks. So this one here should generate a counter for each region. We can go in and simply check counter one up until how many countries you have. You have 44 here. Then it starts over again. And there's 14 in this set. And then finally 10. And now I want to make, say, a triple loop, a nested nested loop, whatever you want to call that. So first we look at the regions, then each region we go for each country, and then you want to summarize, say, all three variables for each country. Now well, that is cool. We can also, of course, done it straight for country, so you didn't have to do this triple loop here, but this is just to illustrate the idea. So how are we going to accomplish that? We're going to start with a four values loop on the outside. Copy paste. And of course, we need to have the end. And now we're going to start nesting the first loop. Of course, we had earlier we had the for each and the inside, but that's the one we want to end with. So now we have the three regions, and now we're going to do the countries. And then we do another four values. You could specify i, but that would be wrong because we already have an i, so we're going to do j. I'll pick another letter if you want. And for simplicity, you can already see that numbers doesn't add up inside, so we're just going to do it for the first three countries, but this is just to illustrate the idea. So we're going to be, for each region, we're going to pick the first three countries and then move on to the next region. Then, of course, I need to set the new curly brackets inside. So now we have the typical nested loop in two layers, and we're going to add the third layer, which, of course, now would be just this for each loop that we had earlier. I'm going to go in here. We're going to put it in there, and we're going to clean it up. This, of course, because it's on the same line, because it, well, that's just the way it looks. So we want to make sure that all this here lines up nicely. Mm -hmm. There we go. It looks fine. We could also stretch this a little bit so it looks better. Whoop, there we go. And then we see how this is gonna to, going to look. Now we're going to see that for each of these test groups here, we have following, we have one here. We got a second one here. Want to make sure we have the nice number of everything here. And then of course we have the last one here. We want to make sure that this one lines up nicely. It's a little more, say, it gets messy pretty quickly. So hopefully I've done this correct. Of course, if I set my brackets correct, it will be done correctly. This is uh, all fine. All you see, there's three layers to this now. And that's cool and all. But only I know only count the number i here. And I need to, of course, also do it for and counter equal equal. And then, of course, we need to do it for j. So hopefully, hopefully this should work and do what I was having in mind. So let's try this out. Good news, it ran pretty quickly. So let's just go and check out how it works. We go to the top. 
you can already see here we get for population growth one observation well that's only because there's one country in there we get the mean 1.1 min max that's because there's only one observation so we get three that should be the first country in the group second country in the group third country in the group you can always go and double check if this actually works the way you intended and i know it's 1.2 74 810 you already see that is here so you already get the idea this will achieve this so-called triple loop but that was a little more complicated what's really useful is the first two here to how to make nested loops in any case i hope you learned something in today's video and i hope to see you back here for another class in Stefan's classroom until next time bye bye <laughs>